The views expressed by guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of their organization. Welcome to the Enterprise Knowledge Cast, a look into the world of knowledge management, information management, data management, and everything in between. This is brought to you by Enterprise Knowledge. I'm Zach Wall, founder and CEO of VK. Today, we're speaking with Stephanie Hill, Senior Director for KM at PayPal. Stephanie, welcome. Hi, welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming online with us. So we'll jump right in. And Stephanie, one of the things I always like to ask folks is to uh, define KM. I think it's one of those terms that gets thrown around in so many different ways and means so many different things, depending on who you ask and what organization you ask. What is KM at PayPal? That's an excellent question. And one we really had to define for ourselves right at a year ago. We decided to embark on a knowledge management transformation effort. So we're in the midst of a three to four year journey to transform what we consider knowledge management. So we had to really define what it is. And really what my team and I came away with from our definition is that it's all the information that our customers and our teammates need to be able to help themselves. So whether it's actual content and words on a page, if it's videos and imagery, workflows, whatever it may be, it's all of that knowledge that helps them resolve whatever situation or, or question that they have in their mind. And that's what we walked away with is, is our definition. Excellent. That's great. So a couple additional questions about that. One of those is it seems like you've really picked in a way your audience or your recipients for KM to be your customers. Have you really focused on that externally facing view of serving your customers as KM or is there an additional audience of those PayPal employees? It is both. You know, I'm in an operations environment, our global customer services operations team. And so half of my job is to really look after our customers and the information and the knowledge they need to successfully transact and use their PayPal accounts. And then the other half really is our teammates who then help service customers who have questions or problems and making sure that the teammates then have all the same information and support content that they need to resolve issues for customers. So it is both sides. Yeah, got it. So that call agent help desk type of person ensuring that they've got complete and consistent information. And if the customer were to find the information themselves, that it would be consistent and be the same thing. Am I getting that right? Absolutely. So my team looks after everything from the point when a customer needs help. So if they go into our help center, they go into our IVR They interact with our chat bot. From the point a customer is looking for anything to help them, we're responsible for everything else in that customer journey all the way through a teammate contact, a phone call, a chat, an email, whatever resolution, you know, that end-to-end view of helping the customer. Perfect. That's great. And that leads me to my second question about really kind of your scope of KM. You mentioned a couple of forms of knowledge and information, the videos, the uh, FAQ, even being fed through a chatbot. What I didn't hear there, but I think you're also implying is structured data, the information that might be in a CRM or might be in some sort of more structured format. Am I, am I guessing correctly that that's also part of this, given the fact that you're taking this kind of ecosystem holistic view? It is. And, and it's something we're really growing through right now. It's part of that transformation that we are working on in this whole space over the next couple of years but really trying to transform from simple knowledge bases and repositories where we've had multiple repositories depending on the channel that the information is being accessed, but really transforming into that single source of truth with a lot of intelligence behind the scenes to pass information when it's needed. So very contextual information in the CRM to our teammates, in our help channels to our customers, but really infusing our knowledge with data and making it very contextual and intelligent. Excellent. Very exciting. I want to come back to that because I I imagine we could spend a whole nother podcast episode talking about contextualized intelligence. But before we go there, let's talk a little bit about what prompted this transformation. So it's clear that y'all have done a lot of thought around this. You've got your scope, 
you've got an understanding of what you want to get out of it. What was that thing that made PayPal? And you say, it's time for us to invest in KM. It's time for us to, to transform the way we're doing this. Oh, excellent question. You know, we've been working through a number of our self-service initiatives for years, really trying to focus on helping customers help themselves. And, and that had been my scope previously. And I kept sort of coming to the conclusion that we can build all of these great tools and we can have all this great functionality. But if the information isn't intelligent, that feeds through those tools to the customer, it's really kind of worthless. Mm -hmm. And so um, my leader and I had a, a great conversation around this. And I said, we really need to overhaul the source of the knowledge. We really need to overhaul the way that we are managing all of this information so that then our tools can be effective. And so through a lot of just brainstorming and, and problem solving, we realized that we needed to kind of start over and reimagine the way that we do knowledge management and so we've kicked off now this three to four year program. We're 11 months into it. Um, this has been an interesting first year to kick off a big strategic program for sure, but it's been really exciting. And our, our team is really focused on the changes that we are trying to, to implement. Uh, very cool. And that shows a lot of maturity in, in your organization, the leadership for recognizing the fact that just throwing another cool technology at this is not going to solve the problem. The fact that it sounds like you're looking at your content and your processes and your people to ensure that the technology has the right feeders to, to really make it work. That's great. Talk to me a little bit about how you got into the field. I find these always lead to pretty interesting stories and often they are pretty circuitous. So how did you become a KMer? Uh, I sort of fell into it, right? It's sort of by default. It wasn't necessarily what I intended to do or, or what I studied in school or anything like that. Um, I've always been in operations my entire career for financial services companies and have done very different types of things. Um, but I did spend a significant stint in global training, mm -hmm. in training and development. And through that iteration, really learned that to enable our teammates, they have to have great knowledge. They have to have great information. And then I got into the self-service world where I was really focusing on trying to drive improvements to self-service and had that same realization. So I sort of fell into knowledge management, realizing that that was such a foundation for these other things to be successful. I really wanted an opportunity to try and work on that foundational level and, and learn something new. This wasn't my area of expertise at all, but it gave me an opportunity to try and learn something new and to see what we could do to make things different and to make some improvements. Excellent. Well, based on the way you're talking about it, it's clearly your area of expertise now. So how did you get there? How did you make yourself smart on the topic of knowledge management? How did you get yourself the right experience to be able to lead this major transformation at obviously a very large and complex organization like PayPal? I think the, the best thing I did was have great people around me. I have an incredibly talented and tenured team that has really been able to help educate me as well. Of course, there's a lot of conferences, there's lots of white papers, there's lots of things you can do yourself. But for me, it's having this team around me and being open with them that I want you to teach me. I wanna learn from you. I wanna hear what you think has worked and what you have always wanted to fix. What has been your wish list? What have you dreamed of? And really putting all of that together and working through that brainstorming type of activity with the team really taught me a lot about the pain points and then helped me just brainstorm in blue sky what we could do different strategically. And I very often go to my product partners with these probably crazy blue sky ideas but they're able to then translate that into something actually that they can build, a technology, a platform. It may not be exactly my crazy harebrained blue sky idea, but it sparks the conversation of something that we can actually then deliver and, and they can go and build and develop for us. So it's been a great partnership and I've just really tried to learn from everyone around me. Yeah. So you're modeling good KM internally, uh, even before you launched your transformation. You're having open conversations. You're hearing from a lot of different voices. It seems like you're putting innovative ideas out there and welcoming the conversation around them. All of that is, you know, I use this phrase, good KM creates happy employees and happy employees are good at KM. And I think that uh, you just modeled that really effectively. That's, that's great. I love that. I may have to borrow that. Uh, feel free to steal it. Okay. No problem at all. I, I don't think that one's patentable in any way. <laughs> So 
I'll go back to the transformation for a moment, if I may. That's not something you just get out of bed and decide to do, even with good support from leadership. So how did you get started with that? And how did you convince the executives at PayPal that this was something that required an investment and a focus? Well, luckily, we were in the midst of an entire transformation across operations. We had put significant focus in a couple of particular areas. We do like three-year strategic planning. And so we were wrapping up our third year of our last big program. We said, okay, now what is our landscape? And we realized there were a number of places we wanted to really make a big difference and transform. And so as our leadership team came together, we started thinking about the tools, the training, the capabilities that we offer customers, the contextual help that we offer our customers. And it all kind of blossomed together at the same time. It was really quite exciting. And what was awesome is that a number of my peers also recognized that that foundation of knowledge management was critical. The more we teased apart these transformative ideas that we were all coming up with, we realized we had to have this foundation. So it really all just kind of came together collaboratively as we were looking at our next big three-year strategic plan in operations. Excellent. Very good. What sort of documentation or roadmap did you put together in order to help communicate what KM is and what it would mean to PayPal? I mean, what did that documentation, what did that deliverable, if you will, look like? What I really started with was a visual of what we have today. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. And flashed up on the screen, we did a big roadshow type presentation and flashed up on the screen all those different repositories we were using today, all the different ways we were having to touch and manage content and threw out some staggering statistics about the number of languages we support, the pieces of content we support. When you multiply the redundancy It was over 80,000 pieces of content that our team was trying to maintain. And then you multiply locales, you know, languages and market nuances on top of that. And it was just staggering. And to be able to lay out the pain point that we have today and say, imagine if we had a better tool, a better process, a single source of truth, and our authors could really then focus on writing once and having reusability across all those different form factors and channels, imagine what our authors could then do with their time, focusing on content quality versus the quantity, which is the way we had sort of fallen into because we had such redundant platforms and processes. So really that was what I used to sort of instigate the opportunity to say, if we get some of this funding, if we get some of this support, we can make a big difference because today they're just spending so much time on that duplication. Excellent. So for our listeners, I really want to draw attention to this. For anybody out there, hear what Stephanie just said. Imagine if. I think that's such a powerful start to a sentence when it comes to talking about KM. It can be so esoteric otherwise, but the very clear use case of 80,000 pieces of content times X languages, the administrative burden, cost, frustration that comes with that, the risk of having inconsistent messaging and content from one piece to another, the cognitive lift that's required through inconsistent formatting of that content, all of this can be really explained by painting the picture of the imagine if it was done differently. I really, really appreciate, Stephanie, the way that you you put that. That's great. Another question I want to ask you, I saw on LinkedIn, you actually mentioned that you're passionate about inclusive work environments. And I get really excited about how knowledge management can really power uh, inclusive work environments can power innovation and ensuring that every voice is heard and every person feels that they have a seat at the table. Can you tell me a little bit about how you think KM and DNI fit together? Absolutely. I think that's a, a really intriguing question and I, and I appreciate it. You know, just over my tenure, I've been part of and led teams across the U.S. and across the globe really across multiple continents. And I've been fortunate they have the opportunity to travel quite a bit to see and meet and work with folks from all over the world. And I've really appreciated those opportunities because it's given me the insight to really understand how differently we communicate, how differently people use information, and what people expect from their knowledge bases 
or their knowledge sources. So for example, we talked about a CRM earlier, you know, through my training experience as well, I've seen that in different parts of the world, teammates want information in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, in some places they want every specific step. They want to make sure they are following the process and the policy to a T, right? With screenshots and graphics to know I am doing this correct. In other places, people want the general guidelines and the freedom to be able to, to make choices for themselves. And so just putting all these different experiences together, I really see the opportunity where we can tailor our knowledge to the way our teammates need it. Some of what we're trying to do is look at the intelligence we have in this system about who our teammates are, what their tenure is, how efficient and effective they are helping our customers to be able to intelligently know what type of content to give them. Do they need all these policy and procedure steps or have they handled this type of contact so many times they might just need a quick blurb of something? And so there's a little bit of DNI in that. Mm -hmm. And then I also really think about it in the voice and tone of our content. So we put a lot of emphasis on voice and tone for our content quality. And we have style guidelines and, and all those types of things for both our external and our internal content. And to me, I think that's super helpful and, and very respectful from a culture perspective that we take the time to try and write content in a voice and tone that's applicable for that market, for the way that those customers speak, for the nuances and the phrases that they're used to using, instead of just using everything one base source of content, right? Making it applicable and sound the way they're familiar mm -hmm. with something sounding. Yeah, that's that's not easy work, but it's so valuable and, and can be so rewarding when it actually results in the beginning of a conversation and the completion of a mission, uh, uh, somebody getting the answer that they need in a way that they're immediately able to act on it. So that's that's really insightful. Thank you for that. It strikes me, I think you, you talked about your route to KM and I'm hearing in your message here elements of all of that, right? So you've, you've mentioned learning and development and the role that that's played, and you've mentioned the self-service and help desk. You have, I think, are successfully applying elements of each of those things to really make KM meaningful at PayPal. And, and it's just really neat to hear how you talk about that. I don't want to end before talking a little bit about intelligence. Yeah, you've used this word several times and increasingly we're seeing how knowledge management is becoming the fuel for artificial intelligence or knowledge artificial intelligence within an organization. Can you talk a little bit about how that fits into that three-year roadmap of yours and, and really what you're doing with it? Absolutely. And again, I am not a technical expert or anything like that Good. in this area, yeah. <laughs> but this is really where we use that brainstorming and blue sky approach to say, you know, what if we were able to know about our customer and know what issue they just had on their account? So when they come into our help center, we can intelligently say, oh, it looks like you need this piece of information. Here's the next step that you need. And we're able to do that a little bit today. We already have some of those capabilities, but we are planning to blow those out significantly, as well as take those into our teammate tools to say, here is the workflow you're in. Here's what we know about the customer. Here's what we know about you, the teammate. Here are the talking points you need. Here's the step you need to follow. So really trying to infuse all of this data that we have to pluck out the right components from our new systems and be able to then intelligently deliver the content Really, my ultimate vision is for a customer or a teammate to never have to use the search bar. Excellent. If we can give them exactly what they need in the moment, they should never have to go and search for our knowledge. And, and that's sure. our ultimate goal. Uh, so really about feeding the end user the stuff that maybe they don't even know they're asking for, but knowing enough about them and what they're trying to do to really push it to them in a way that doesn't even feel like self-service, doesn't even feel like they're looking for it. They're just getting the information they need in a way that feels right and intuitive. Am I getting exactly. that right? Exactly, that's, yes. That's really exciting. That's fantastic. And you know what we're seeing with some of our customers is that's not pie in the sky. That is doable today. If you've got the right KM foundations and are pulling in the right technology set, that's, that's achievable. That's mm -hmm. really, really exciting. Do you have kind of a sense of how y'all are going to do that from a technical perspective? We're seeing a lot of our customers are looking at 
moving their taxonomies to ontologies and employing knowledge graphs as part of a solution like this? Is, is that what PayPal is looking at or a different approach? Yeah, that's exactly what we're looking at. We have actually done a technology assessment. We've recently decided to take some new paths with the tools and the technologies that we're using, and we are standing up some new systems and platforms and tying everything together. Um, but absolutely, we're building out our taxonomies and ontologies. We're building out our content model mm -hmm. so that we can really then tie in all this data and intelligence. And I sort of used the term loosely earlier, but to be able to pluck out that component, that small piece of content that we need when we need it and deliver it based on all the information that we have, which comes out of our taxonomies or ontologies and everything else that we're putting into the decision tools. Very exciting. And, and that goes back to your answer about inclusion as well, because it's not as simple as simply translating text. It really is about assembling it in different ways for different scenarios and different types of users. So you get a really dynamic experience, right? So you might have already answered this in a way, but what are you most excited about in KM right now, either from a technical perspective or just in the field overall? What, what gets you out of bed in the morning? I'm super excited about the opportunity to do this sort of more intelligently, right? To give customers and teammates what they need when they need it. Again, my background with training and working in self-service, I just know the difference that can make for customers and teammates if we can do that. Plus really our authoring team, I want to be able to make a difference in the way that they work every day and give them something to be excited about and not feel like they're copying and pasting into all these repositories, but they're able to make a difference in their work. Yeah. And there's potentially massive return on investment there as well, right? I mean, everything that you're talking about here is a reduction in the administrative burden that y'all are dealing with. Less content, less systems, more ability for self-service, but that also translates to better experiences for your customers, more completion, more sense of care and understanding that it's just easy to get their answers and get their job done. So there are a lot of great reasons to be doing what you're doing. I'm sure you've, you've enumerated all of those uh, really clearly. What did I miss? Anything else that you want to share about your work in KM or, or what, what PayPal's working on now? I think the last thing I'd share sort of goes to one of your early questions about how you got into it, because other people ask me that sometimes. And I'd say, for me, I, I think having experience across multiple areas is really critical and key to be able to think really broadly and strategically. And so I encourage my team and others who are interested in it to jump in, to learn, to take stints doing all sorts of other assignments, you know, get an opportunity to learn multiple avenues of the business. Because when you can bring it all together, that's when you really can think broadly and strategically and, and look for opportunities to make a difference. But I'm just super excited. I feel like I've learned so much from my team. I've got so much more to learn, but I feel like we are making a big difference and moving in the right direction. It's gonna take a while. It's not an overnight transformation, but it's really exciting to be moving forward. I love it. I, I'm hearing a lot of really promising and exciting things here. So I, I wish you the very best. It, from my perspective, sounds like you're doing everything right. So best of luck to you. And with that, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Stephanie Hill, Senior Director of KM at PayPal. For everyone out there, thanks for listening to this episode of KnowledgeCast. Check out more information on KM at enterprise-knowledge.com. Have a great day, everybody.